We're now going to look at the product property involved with simplifying our radicals. So suppose we start with the product property itself. So the product property states that if I have the square root of a times the square root of b, that's going to be equal to the square root of a times b, so long as the indexes all match. And the nth root of a and the nth root of b have to be real. Meaning if their n is even, they both have to be positive. So let's start with the square root of 24. When we add the square root of 24, we can break this up as the square root of 4 times the square root of 6, because 24 is 4 times 6. This one reduces because that's a perfect square, so we get 2 root 6 as our final answer. Likewise, if we have 5 times the cube root of 24, we can break this up as 8 and 3, so that 5 equals the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 3, and the cube root of 8 is 2, so this becomes 5 times 2 is 10, cube roots of 3. So notice I multiplied what came out by what was already out to get my answer. If we have variables, square root of 75x squared, well, the x is going to come out, and because we're taking the square root of x squared, we get the absolute value of x. Square root of 75 is 3 times 25, so we get a 5 out from the 25, but we're left with the 3 inside the square root. But here is our answer. Likewise, we can look at the fourth root of 50. So this is a whole new problem. And 50 is 5 times 10, which is 5 times 2. And since I'm looking for the fourth root, nothing gets to come out. So this is simplified. It's as small as it gets. Now, this absolute value piece is getting to be a little bit of a hassle. Trying to remember it, when do we need it, when do we not need it. It would be really nice if we could ignore it. And there is one way we can ignore it. If we assume that all variables are greater than or equal to zero, then we can say the nth root of a to the n is always a, because a is guaranteed to be positive. So we can't ever worry about not the non-real numbers. Now, you can only make this assumption when you're told you can make this assumption. And for the rest of the chapter, we're going to make this assumption. But always, always look for it when you're working on problems related to it. So this allows us to, to look at problems like 20, x to the tenth in a lot easier fashion. Because we can do the square root of 20 and the square root of x to the tenth. And when we have a, this, this is just the same as 10 to the 5. 10 to the 5. 10 x times 10 over 2, which is x to the fifth. And I don't need absolute values because we're assuming that the variables are positive. So we get an x to the fifth on the outside. 20 is 4 and 5. And the 4 comes out as a 2. And so my answer is 2x to the 5th times the square root of 5, since the 5 had to stay in. Likewise, we can look at the cube root of 27, m to the 4th, n to the 14th. We're able to break this up into the cube root of 27 times the cube root of m to the 4th times the cube root of n to the 14th. We get to do something really cool here. This, of course, we have memorized. The cube root of 27 is 3. This becomes m to the 4 thirds which is n to the 1 and 1 third, which says a single m comes out, but we leave a single m inside. And this becomes n to the 14 thirds, which is n to the 4 and 2 thirds, so 4 m's come out, oops, excuse me, and 2 n stay inside. So my answer is 3 m n to the 4th cube roots of m n squared. Now, when you're dealing with nth roots, one of the really cool things you can look at is your powers inside always have to be smaller than the root when you're looking at variables. It makes it very easy to see if you should keep pulling them out. But if you can keep these rules straight and that your variables are always positive, it's very easy to keep track of what you're working on.